Bill, thank you so much for joining us here at Case 20. Great to have you, as always. Awesome to see you again, Emma. Thank you. What do you see as the biggest changes coming at us as we enter this new decade? Well, I, I did a panel this morning, and it's very apropos to your question. So we've had a risk on trade that's persisted since the global financial crisis. So 11 years in, the uh, uh, All World Index was up 27% last year, and it's up almost 2% year to date. So annualize that, I'm looking at another 20% plus year. I'm not calling that. But as an allocator, it's going to be a very tough environment to be in. The, the central banks have got to find a way of disengaging themselves from the capital markets and get back to normalcy. But one of the points made with the panel is that I think we're in a bit of an eye of the storm. And getting out the other side is going to be painful. It was painful coming into the global financial crisis, equally painful coming out. So I think some rough waters ahead of us, but uh, I'm an optimist. And with global, through. one of the key themes of this conference, that, that's the key, isn't it? Are we looking at you know, the decoupling of China and, and the U.S. being a massive kind of issue in that sense as well. Well, uh, Ian Bremmer covered this today, and this populist view, uh, I think, can be very polarizing and very dangerous. We've got some very tough challenges ahead of us, particularly in the area of climate. And, and I, I said this on my panel because one of uh, Ian's colleagues rose on the panel. I said I was depressed after hearing Ian speak because we need to have global intervention at the policy-making level to fix this. And one of the points I, I've made several times is that as a human being, this problem is so large, I should feel personal inconvenience, and I don't. So if I want to take a Cathay flight from Boston to Hong Kong, which it is once a day, if I don't get on that plane, it still takes off without me. But if I call and want to go next Tuesday, and Cathay says, we're not flying that anymore, that's change, and I'm inconvenienced. I don't feel any of that in my life. And if we're going to get this fixed and get this global temperature settled at, at the high level it's at, it's going to require a lot of personal sacrifice, and I'm just not feeling that personal sacrifice and perhaps leadership from a group like this at Case who've got the sort of clout and, and have the financial clout as well to, to make those changes. Absolutely. So if I, Tony put a, a slide up there in a survey we did with Create and KPMG and, and AMA about who's got to lead the charge. And 85% said it's the institutional investor. At the very bottom was the trade associations, which I guess is Kaya, so there's a 6% expectation that I'm going to help. So it's a low bar, and I hope I can exceed it. But what I was, was disappointing is that the policymakers are very low on the list, too. So it's not a question of who's ultimately responsible. We all are. And we all can do our part. And, and certainly, Kaya, we're looking to raise the volume and get into the middle of these discussions. But Because we have the year of the allocators, the year of the regulators, the asset managers. But it's going to take more than just conversation. We've got to move toward action because we're really running out of time. You mentioned there the year of the regulators. Is this a, a, a point in history where we've got to look at actually making people do things, having rules that say this is how you've got to invest? Or can we really rely on people's goodwill? Uh, as much as I, I, I would like to say yes to your latter question, I think the answer is simply no, because unless there's uh, regulation with teeth in it, I think most investors and capitalists are going to do what's ultimately in their best interest first and foremost, even though they, they talk a good game. And the point I made uh, in my uh, panel uh, provocatively is that Larry Fink writes this letter to the Fortune 500 CEOs, and everybody says that's a great thing to do, which I agree with. But then China has, unfortunately, this virus that takes place. Several million dollars, several million barrels of oil are taken off the grid. And people are talking about how important this is to the market. And oil is drawing down 20%, catastrophes in the headline. Where is it's great to have these three million barrels off the grid? And let's try to find that as the next new low point. But instead, uh, the, the link of fossil fuels to global GDP is enormous. And we've got to find a way of decoupling that. And I think the regulators and the policymakers have got to step in with something that has teeth and consequences attached to it. The other theme of the conference is digital. Um, where do you think technology will play its part in all of this? And obviously data and, and what's available to people to, to know the truths. Well, I think it's nascent to some degree, but I think there's a massive solution tucked in there. And we're going to be talking about trust, I think, this afternoon in a lot of the panels. And one of the admonitions I gave to the, the audience today is that the next source of alpha is our privacy. And are we ready to have that compromise? So I think that's the downside. The upside is that if I think about solving problems like climate and ESG, it's been a, a lack of reporting consist consistently and a lack of data. That's, they've been the big issues. I would like to think all the advent of this alt data can help solve that. So you can look at, at what management says on a regular basis and provide your own ESG rating about 
what's in the hearts, minds, and souls of these executives of these Fortune 500 companies, and hopefully that's going to lead to a better path. It is still nascent. There's a ton of it out there. We're creating massive amounts every single day, but we've got to find a way of weaponizing that for the good. Find the solutions. Bill, thank you so much for sharing your insights. Good pleasure. Good to, good to see you. As always. Thank you, Emma.